I think to me the way God found me was through sickness. I got sick in 2011 and I became very sick. Every hospital that is called an hospital in this country I went, they said that I was suffering from a certain cancer disease called pancreatic cancer. So I went to... Did, did you say cancer? Yes, cancer. You went from which hospital to which one? I went from Nairobi West Hospital. Nairobi West Hospital. I went to Nairobi Hospital. Nairobi Hospital. Eventually, I, after covering the small hospitals in Nairobi, some of them I can't remember today because they were going to diagonize me. I came back home because I almost believed, plus my family, that my time had... Uh, Your life span. Yes, my life span had, had almost expired. So I wanted to be close home where if anything happens, it can't be a big burden. And uh, I came... And my parents decided that let them take me to hospital once more. They decided to take me to Kindu Bay, but somehow I was not for Kindu Bay. I persuaded them to take me to Tenwick. Yes. When I went to Tenwick, after their examinations, they came up with a, a conclusion that no, you are suffering from pancreatic cancer. That and was the conclusion. That was the conclusion. For, from the Newark Hospital? Yes, from the Newark Hospital. Yes. And so I said no. I'm not suffering from pancreatic cancer. I had an issue with the doctors, and so they decided, no, we are going to send you for one more scan, sit scan. Yes. And so I said, I can manage. By then, we had only four sit scans in this country. One was in Nairobi, yes. one in Nakuru, one in Kisumu, Another and one, one in, Kis in Kisi. So I said, I come from Kisi, I can go to that place. And I remember, it was on the first of August 2010. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, in Tenwek, they told me that I was going to leave for three months. Three months? They gave me a maximum of three months. That was on 1st of August. We are talking about 2010. 2010. And now we are here, 11 years down the line, and we are talking about a medical report that yes. gave us three months. Three months to leave. This is 11 years. 11 years There I'm must still have alive. been a God in between. But there is a God in heaven. <laughs> there is there, a there God in heaven. God. Yes, yes. I, I, you can't convince me otherwise after being treated. There, there is something else they tried to, to treat, so they gave me about two operations that time in 2010. Actually, something that devastated me so much. When God has interest in you, it doesn't matter the heights you cover. He will still cover you up. Yes. He, he, he'll be with you. Now, after 2017, I became sick again. Now, this time, it was serious. And I believed, like, uh, I had a calling to heaven. Not according to ministry. Not according to ministry. Yes. I, I was like, God is calling me to go home. So, I went to every hospital from here in Kisi Town. They referred me to Nairobi. I went again to Nairobi West <laughs> Hospital. Yeah, that's, that's the time when songs begin coming. <laughs> ah, uh, wonderful. See my home. Yes. Lord, I'm coming yeah. home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So I went to Nairobi West. They referred me from Nairobi West into Nairobi Hospital. Yes. I had my now third operation in Nairobi Hospital. After that operation, when I came out the following day thinking that I'm now well, the doctors came and said, the operation was not successful. Wow. And I was like, oh my, we what, are going to hire another doctor what consultant. A, what a damaging statement. It was not successful. So they brought me another doctor. They again booked me for another operation. Yeah. After four days, I was again into theater. Yeah. And I had another operation. I can understand. And that was a very serious operation. And they told me, because they were dealing with the liver, and they told me that was the last they can do, or else it will be worse. But uh, after like two, three weeks, they discharged me. And after three days, I became sick again. I was rush, rushed to hospital. And uh, they said there must be another operation. 
that very day, or I could. Uh, so this is like uh, the sixth or the seventh. Operation. Now I was going to the fifth operation. Fifth operation yeah, for the second sickness. Yeah. You have had two operations. Yeah, in, in the, the first sickness. One. Yeah. So total, we are talking about seven. Seven operations. Seven operations. Yes. As you are seated, <laughs> and as strong as you are, you have been to theater seven, seven times. times. Seven times. Operations. Spiritually, we say is a perfect number. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And um, yeah. that was, I remember that operation was very serious that the doctor said it cannot work. I was kept waiting for that operation until I called them and I asked them, can you please tell me what is happening? They told me you don't understand what is happening. Yes. I, that is the time I remember I, sent, I asked my sister to send you a message. To send me? Yes, and to tell you that my life was uh, coming to an end. You are going home? Yes, I was going home. Before duty? <laughs> Before duty. Yes. You oh. responded with a verse. Yes. And I can only really remember the words of that verse. You will not die. Actually, you did not comment anything except that verse. You just wrote the verse and the words of the verse. You will not die. You shall live. You shall declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I read that scripture like this. And somehow, again, in my ignorance, God allowed me to believe. Yes. I believed those words. And I called the doctors and asked them, what else can you do? They said, you don't understand. I said, I do understand. Please do your work. Allow God to do his. Yes. Immediately, they started to prepare me for, for operation. Yes. That was around 4 in the evening. By 9.30 at night, I was awake. No matter what you go through at the moment, the scripture says that God will take away sickness from among you. Yes. And guarantee you a complete, perfect lifespan, a full lifespan. Yes. Exodus 23, verse 25. Yes. The operation was successful. The seventh operation. It was successful. I remember, Pastor, what that doctor said afterwards. He told me that he was driving towards his home at 9.30. PM. PM at night after the operation. And he said he was not going to be paid for that operation. Because he never believed that I could come out of that theater alive. And two weeks later, he called me. He told me, Jared, where, wherever you go, please don't say that Dr. So-and-so healed you or treated you. It was God. It was purely God. When I was coming now from hospital, I, somewhere close to Kisi, I was with my wife. I, I reached somewhere. I called you. You told me you are in Kisi town. I came, I met you. I was very weak and frail. And you, you talk a few things here and there. I was like, okay, that's normal. <laughs> now, you told me, by the way, you know, God could be calling you back to ministry. I remember I told you, when he will speak to me, yes. <laughs> I will respond. And then you made a, a, a very soft statement. Perhaps he could be speaking to you even now. Uh, <laughs> that statement haunted me all the way to my home. Perhaps he could speak. He could be speaking to you. Yeah, because now. God can speak to you in a vision. He can send a man. He can use nature. He's not limited of avenues of communication. By then, I didn't know that. Yes, <laughs> I didn't know that God can speak to you through a man. I wanted to hear directly, like now. Jared, I am God. I am God. <laughs> But when you told me that, actually, I had right inside me that God was actually speaking to me. That's how the following week, I didn't come. The week after, I came to worship at Gospel Embassy Chapel. And since that time, I've never looked back. I knew God had called me to ministry. It's been uh, three years now, or so, three and a half. I can never regret. God, I have seen him. I didn't know that God can use any person. Especially people like us who left him long time ago. 
went to do our own things. Yeah. And especially in the line of manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Because I heard you speak in tongues. I said, ah. I especially speaking in tongues, I never believed it. I was thinking that people could just fumble words. Yes. But one time I tried to fumble those words, they could not come out. I couldn't go for one minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, let me leave this thing alone. But afterwards, when I went to Kakamega, I have seen God working miracles through me. That, that sinful man who was living like another in the world, I have seen God working miracles. I have seen God healing people. Yes. I have seen God through me cast, uh, casting out demons, serious demons. I have seen God giving women children. Three women came in front. They wanted children. And I said, receive your children. Receive your children. One month later, exactly one month later, all of them came back with a testimony. We, we are, are pregnant. Conceived. We are pregnant. Wow. I wow. saw God. When a man leaves God, that's a joke. But when God leaves a man, it is that's serious. A serious one. What happened to your and case is that God never left you. Actually, he never left. And many people think God has left them. Let me tell you, viewer, wherever you are. When God leaves you, it is a disaster. <laughs> Don't even pray for it. But when a man leaves God, that's a joke. It's yes. just like a boy from a family. Yes. You walk away from your dad. But when your dad leaves you, you know you have no inheritance. Yes. That's now you right. have an inheritance among the saints. We are faithless, but God is faithful to his promises. What he said he will fulfill in your life will come to pass. What God said will come to pass in your life. Just surrender to his will, it will come to pass.